Hello and welcome to Tuesday DJ Gig Tips on a Friday morning <laughs> brought to you by Vibo, the music planning app. Here's a video I've been wanting to do for a while, just haven't had time, I've been very busy lately, been doing some cool car shop stuff that I'm sure only seven or eight of you are interested in. But anyway, I want to do a video about how to be successful in the nightclub and bar business. I've got 10 things I want to share with you, 10 tips. And these are my tips, all right? There are going to be people out there who do not agree with them or think you should do something completely different. These are my tips and suggestions, but it's based on me doing this since I was a teenager, okay? So I've been in this business for a while, and I'm back at the clubs again at 52. And I'm having fun, and I'm seeing a lot of benefits working in clubs, but I've also learned a few things along the way that I wanted to just share with you. If you like any of these tips, let us know in the comment section. Which ones do you like? Maybe you're in the bar and nightclub business as a DJ and you do similar things. Let us know in the comment section. If there's something you don't like, let me know in the comment section. If you've got another tip, right down here, let us know. So, I say 10 tips. But there's more than 10 tips here, quite a few more actually, and I've made some notes. So I'm just going to go down the line and try to give you some explanations on each one of them. Here we go. Tip number one, pick the right venue. Make sure it's somewhere that you're comfortable and feel safe working in. A place where you are kind of vibing with the crowd is really good. If you're feeling the crowd and the crowd's feeling you, that's great. Make sure the money's there, of course. You don't want to go into a place for $150 and know that two years from now it's going to be that same $150. It's nice to go into a place where there's the potential for growth. And like I said, feel safe. Make sure this is some place where you feel like the bar staff is cool, the clientele is cool, there are no red flags popping up. You know, it's one thing to try a place out and see how it works. I've done that. You know, sometimes I do. And it's like, wow, I don't think this is a good fit. Other times, hey, I think this is a good fit. You can try stuff. But, you know, after a gig or two, it doesn't feel right. Get out. Don't do it. Find the right venue. It's very important for your sanity, your happiness, and, and even the crowd's happiness. Find the right venue. Uh, tip two. Show up early. This shows that you're excited to be there. This shows that you're interested in being there. It also gives you an opportunity to be social with the staff or management. Just kind of find out what's going on. I show up an hour and 45 minutes to an hour early. And during that time, what do I do? I touch base with everyone. I say hello to everyone. Kind of find out what's going on, you know? Anything they want to tell me, uh, they'll volunteer it. I don't ask them things. They just volunteer things to me. Let me know what's happening. Have a soda. The place that I work has a restaurant going until it flips into a club. So I'll have a bite to eat. They're kind enough to feed me, so I, I eat. And it gives me time to do fun warm-up sets if I want to. I can just go up there and play whatever I want until it's time to kick things off. So I think showing up early is good because the people who work at many establishments when you show up early really appreciate it. So, show up early. Be excited about what you're doing. Tip three, look sharp. What does that mean? Well, there's no dress code at the place that I work, so I could show up in anything. But I try to look neat and clean. Clean shaved. I try to make sure my hair is good. And I keep real short hair these days over here. It looks crazy in the videos. There's usually something flopping down like this, but... When I'm working, thing, things are combed back and tight. I'll wear like a nice polo shirt, sometimes a vest, something clean, not anything fancy. My clean jeans even is fine. Um, there's a rule that I've gone by for well over 30 years. Somebody who is much cooler than me shared this with me. If you've got like a beard and long hair or something like that, or even like a lot of tattoos and stuff or piercings, that's cool as long as you dress neat like to balance it out 
you know. So maybe if you have a real neat and clean look, you might want to dress a little more rock and roll. It's a balanced thing. It's a yin and yang. Just a little tip for you. It's worked really well for me. In fact, when I'm working, a lot of people think that I am more important than I am. When I approach them, they think I'm management or something, or I own the place because of the way I'm dressed and presenting myself. It does go a long way. I guess this is tip four. Be nice to everyone. Of course you want to be nice to customers. As nice as you can. Drunks are always fun to deal with, but try to be nice. Have you ever seen Patrick Swayze's Roadhouse? It says, whatever you do, do it nice. If somebody's being unruly, throw them out, but throw them out nice. But it's really important to also be nice to everyone on staff. Everyone. From the bar back to the servers to the low people on the totem pole in, in the kitchen, if there's a kitchen where you work, or the person at the door, the bouncers, be nice to everyone. Even if they're not always particularly friendly with you, give them a kindness. I was working with somebody like that a while back. Couldn't hardly get a word out of them unless they were saying, excuse me. Every time I see that person, I smile and say, hey, hi there, nice to see you. You kill them with kindness. No matter what, be nice to everybody. Why? Why would I want to be nice to a bar back or some low person on the totem pole bartender? Because you never know who they're going to be tomorrow. Ozzy Osbourne had a great saying, and I'm paraphrasing. Be careful who you mess with on your way to the top because you never know who you're going to meet on your way back down. And I have found that to be true so many times. I've ran into situations where, you know, people who are providing like little services, like we have this like funny money blackjack deals thing that you do sometimes where gambling isn't legal. It's for like funny money for drinks or something. I loaned one of the blackjack dealers some records, some polka records for his son's wedding. And this is when I was a teenager working in a club. He was nobody, you know, but I, I, I was nice to him. He asked and I, I took care of him. A couple weeks later, after he got home from his son's wedding in Poland, he became the manager of the bar. They got rid of the manager, brought him in. And he loved me, I could do no wrong. This guy already knew I had his back. I was trustworthy, I was cool to everybody just recently. One of the bartenders who was very nice, was very kind to him, got along with him really well. Turns out he just accepted an assistant management position at the place. So, yeah, be nice to everybody because you never, never know. I guess this is tip number five. Don't talk smack about anybody. Don't gossip, you know. Somebody may give you gossip or tell you how they feel about somebody else. But... I wouldn't be the person spreading that stuff. I don't even want to talk smack about another club. I don't want to talk smack about another DJ. I don't want to talk smack about anybody. I don't want to, if I've got something to say, I want it to be a nice thing. It's like maybe your mother used to say, if, if you're old like me, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. I always try to pay compliments. Somebody says something, oh, that person, oh yeah, you know what? They're a hard worker. Or yeah, you know what? They always look fantastic, or they're always smiling, or I always try to say something positive about everybody. Don't don't gossip. Don't be that person. Go in there, do your job, be cool to everybody, and don't be talking smack about anybody, you know, especially behind their back. What would this be? Tip number six. This one's controversial. Believe it or not, I'm having a hard time with it being so controversial, but it is. And I don't know a lot of people who actually follow this rule. But don't drink at work. A lot of people drink in the club business, the bar business, bartenders, wait staff. I've been offered a lot of drinks, but hey, I don't drink. Even if you do drink, just say you don't drink. There are a couple of reasons for this. This is why I think this is important. The first reason is something I was told a long time ago from somebody who wanted a multi-op. Uh, told me why they didn't want us drinking, and it made total sense. If there's an altercation, for some reason, 
between me and a patron or another staff member, or whatever, and the police get involved, if anybody gets arrested, it's the person who's been drinking. It will not be the sober person. It will just go straight to them. You want to keep a clear head at work, you know, especially when you have to deal with the public. Stuff might come up. You want to have a clear head and deal with it. It's always best to do it sober. I, some of you, ah, drinking doesn't affect me here or there. But you know what? If there's a problem again, the sober person is never at fault. It just doesn't happen. It's always the intoxicated person. Another reason is that although they may give you a hard time for it, the staff will respect you. Even if they're drinking, they will respect you. And you might become the voice of reason. Something's going on. So, well, you know what? Maybe I've had a couple of cocktails. Let me check with the DJ. He doesn't drink. How does he feel about this? That's a cool thing. And that's an asset to any establishment. To be the voice of reason. To be the sober person. Be the adult in the room. The designated driver. What are we at? Tip number seven. Make the bar money. When we're doing wedding receptions, we're not making the bride and groom money or the bride and bride or the groom or groom or whatever the situation is. The newlyweds, we're not making them money. They are paying for a service because they want it. You know, it's kind of a luxury item for them. When you're working at a bar or a club, you are there essentially to help make them money. The weird part about it is management doesn't always know why you're there, you know, but you're essentially there to make the money. If you were not making the money, you were not doing your job. So the reason that I bring that one up as seven is there's a lot of stuff that you could put under that. There's a lot of techniques that you can do as a DJ uh, to help the place make money. One way that you hear about a lot is promotion. A lot of clubs, well, how many people can you bring into the place? They're looking for you to bring warm bodies into the establishment. And, and that's valid, you know, that, that's a cool thing where you can bring people in. Another thing that you can do is work with the clientele who's coming in there and make sure they come back. Get yourself in this place in a, on a consistent basis. And, you know, like, let's say I, I want to do Fridays at the club I'm at. I'm kind of here and there right now, but I really want to do Fridays because I want to be consistent. And I want to be able to tell people in there who say, wow, we had such a good time tonight. I've been looking for a place to bring my friends. I want to be able to say to them, I'm here every Friday, even if I work Saturdays too, or even if I take a Friday off once in a while, I just want to be there semi-consistent. That makes the bar money. You bring people in, you establish regulars. That helps. And, and the way you do that is to play to the audience in front of you. There are a lot of clubs that are EDM clubs or hip hop clubs or country or whatever the format might be. Uh, <laughs> Latin clubs, salsa. Merengue, bachata. There are clubs that play things like Tejano and Banda and whatever. But a lot of clubs are open format. The one I'm working at is. And I always play to who comes into the room and take care of them for requests best I can. That's a really good way that you can help make the bar money. You know, establish regulars, rotate the dance floor, pay attention to what everybody's doing. But, but that's your purpose for being there is to make their money. So take that into consideration, make them money. Choose, and I I'm, I'm forgot what number we're on, it doesn't matter, there's a lot of tips here, but this one is kind of tricky. I don't always nail it, but it's always best to try to nail it because as DJs in an establishment, we're gonna look around and we're gonna get ideas on how things could be different or how things could run better for everybody or how things could be easier for everyone. And, and I like to share these tips, but choose your opportunity. And I'm looking at my notes to make your suggestions wisely. If you're just running up to people and say, Hey, I have an idea that might not always be the best approach. I like to wait for people to open the conversation to change to me before I make suggestions. Otherwise, it sounds like I'm maybe complaining or being pushy or something or maybe talking out of school. I think it's important to choose that time wisely. You'll be very careful how you do that. I don't always nail it. Sometimes I, I just can't help myself and I have to 
tell them what my idea is. But I think it's best to kind of wait. You know, play the long game on this. Wait until it comes up. and the, You know what? Now that you mention it, and then bring it up. Just a suggestion on that. Every place is different. Be consistent with everything that I've talked about, too. That's, that's a tip I've bullet pointed. You want to come in in a good mood, with the right energy, early, playing to the audience, being nice to everybody, not talking smack about anybody, uh, you know, making the establishment money by playing to the audience, establishing regulars, you know, and choosing your opportunity to make your suggestions wisely consistently. It's important. You don't drink consistently. You know, you don't go with, you know, six months of I don't drink and then all of a sudden one night you get wasted back there. Don't do it. I've made the decision not to drink at these places. That's what it is and it's always going to be what it is. I'm going to be consistent on that. Be consistent. It's not like a wedding, all right, where we go and we work with this group of people and then we never see them again or we don't see them again until we work with the group again. Sometimes it's a one and done. Oftentimes it's a one and done. Not the case with the bar. You're going to see these people all the time. Bar and club. So be consistent. Whatever you do, be consistent. And my last tip on here is know when it's time to go. Know when it's time to leave. Maybe the place is getting rough. Maybe you're getting jerked around with money. Maybe you have gotten a better offer. Maybe you're making $300 at a club and somebody offers you $500 to work at their club. That's a step up. I mean, you're smart. Make the assessment. Make sure it's the way to go. But when you do know when it's time to go, exit gracefully. Two weeks notice is kind of tough sometimes in this business because the place may need you to start immediately. But I think people appreciate two weeks notice. Alternately, if you're offered a position that's just too good to be true somewhere else or you got to get out of there, if you can be the person who helps them solve the problem of we don't have a DJ by bringing a pal in, that's cool. You know, and why? Why would you care? Let's go back to the um, don't talk smack about anyone. And be nice to everyone because you never know who you're going to meet on your way back down. This business tends to rotate bartenders and staff quite a bit. They'll work at several different establishments, as DJs we do, as club DJs we do. You never know who you're going to run into again. So don't leave on bad terms. Leave on good terms. And like I said, if you've got to go because there's a great opportunity coming up and you don't want to miss out because they need that DJ for this weekend, See if you can get somebody in for them. See if you can recommend somebody to come in and take care of them. It's just a tip, folks. And these are all just tips, not gospel. My tips, based on my experience. All I could think of this morning, so I wrote them down, and I'm sharing it with you. And I hope they help somebody. Let me know if they do, down here in the comment section. I've rambled on long enough. I'll close this video. And I thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you so much. We'll see you next time. Practice and enjoy.